So in the previous video where we made improvements to the code, um, actually it wasn't the previous one, it was like episode 19 or something, I cut down the branching factor by just selecting a single colour to branch from rather than selecting every colour. And it's a huge improvement but it's not the best. So the way we choose the colour was I think we used like Numpy Unique and then pick the first one. So I'd expect on this board here we'd be picking red. Um, and probably start with this end right here and as you can see we could go here or here so branching factor of 2 in theory if we selected the wrong move at the start um, we'd then be doubling our, compute, like our overall time to solve the board um, or, some, or like at least add in half of the maximum possible solve time or something like that basically just adding a lot of unnecessary computation in there because as soon as we made this wrong move, it's going to exhaust every possible move on the board before going back and undoing this and doing the right one. Um, so yeah, if we were smart about it, instead of just picking like this red one, we could pick this blue one, which only has a branching factor of one. So we one, we know it's a right move, and two, it's a lower branching factor. So it helps in like particularly on boards such as this one right here where I'm not sure where we'd start here but one of these greens um, this one has a branching factor of 3 and this one has a branching factor of 4 I think it would be one of these greens, I'm not certain but I think it would um, but if we were smart about this one we could pick this red and branching factor of 1 so even though like say this is only one move we could make, it's actually not, there's like other ones, but say it was only one it's still a huge cut down in computation time because we know that moves right so um, it kind of it blocks other potential wrong moves as well and things like that so you do end up getting some pretty big improvements on it particularly on like the larger boards so I figured I'd try and implement some clever way of picking the colours so that's what we're going to look at now. So all this stuff here is the old code. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to comment that out for now. We're going to run it in a bit. I'm just going to show you the uh, the speed differences. Actually, what we'll do is I'll set this up running right now, and then we can just see it for comparison. So we're going to do board 13. Um, I've actually already run this. It's actually the one right there, 27 seconds. But I'll just prove it. Do it again. It's not actually going to draw the solution here, it'll just um, print out the solved board and exit the program. Come on. There we go, so 29 seconds. So now we're going to comment this out and take a look at what I've done which is all this stuff right here now first we're going to go down and look at this function I made so this function is number of possible moves check what this does is it takes in a board and a position so IJ and it checks how many possible moves does that position have and it returns it um, really simple we'll just have a read through it's not too different from other things we've done. So bear in mind we've now got this function. Um, what I've added is, so we start by defining minimum choices which is 5. Um, this is the, this can be like a running total of the current lowest total choices a board has. Whoops I just showed you what I've, uh, I've just realised I'm not actually showing you what I'm talking about. Here we go. So this is the function I was talking about, um, number of possible moves check, it literally takes in board and position and returns the number of moves. Um, like I say, done very similar stuff before so let's have a read over. Now here's where we're at, so I've commented out the previous code um, and yeah minimum choices right here. So this is going to be, if we bring up the board, this is going to be say for yellow, minimum choices would be 3, um, 
for this one, this red one right here, choices would be one. That's the idea of this. So we start out by setting equal to five because nothing's going to have a minimum choice of five because there's only four possible directions. And we also want to keep track of where the best one is. So it starts out in none because we don't have one. Now we loop over the board and we say if the position is an end, then find out how many possible moves that end has by calling this uh, this new function we've got down here. If the number of moves it has possible is less than the minimum choices number, then our new minimum choices number is equal to that number. So say on this board over here, the first one it picked was this green one. Um, it's got three moves, so we return three. And three is less than five, so that would be our current minimum. Um, and that would be our temporary like colour that we would use if that was the end of our loop. So we save that as our lowest number and we then save the position of that colour just in case that ends up being our best. Now we're going to loop over the entire board so eventually this number will be the lowest possible one so in, in our case it would be the uh, the red with the branch of factor of 1 like it would be this one right here or maybe this one, just one of them with one it would be. Um, then once it's found that it basically does it does exactly what this bit does it just instead of doing it with uh, i and j and like looping off the board and um, since it already knows the position it doesn't have to loop over the board it just literally um, finds like the board and the position and creates the new boards and stuff and appends it to the list of boards um, it's pretty much the same logic as what we've looked at before so I'm not going to go over that but yeah that's basically it um, what I'm going to do now is because we've already run this and done what I need to do for the demo I'm just going to delete this no need to have it anymore um, the new one's better so I'm just going to save that and we'll run it and see what our new time is so 29 seconds to beat or 27 in my other one and now with the improvements to the uh, the branching factor thing we get six seconds so pretty significant improvement and I would expect I haven't checked this fully but I would expect that this um, the improvement percentage would be better on the bigger boards so like when we move on to the jumbo pack for example down here um, this level 2 for example took ages to do with the old one I haven't run it on the new one yet but I'd expect it would be a lot quicker um, maybe if I follow up on this video we'll look at what that is so yeah pretty happy with how that worked out there's another couple of things I want to add to it to reduce branch factor so for example the way it does it now um, this one right here it would say has two moves but really it doesn't it's only got one because it, it's the only one that can go in this corner and um, we looked at this way back at the beginning like when we were doing the algorithm solver rather than the recursive solver um, so yeah I'd, I'd like some way of adding that in to account for that because that's actually pretty significant it's also a couple of other things I'd like to add um, to help like be more clever about the random moves it's taken and stuff. I'm not too sure. Got a couple of ideas, but maybe we'll talk about them in another video. Um, so yeah, that's about it for now. Um, again, all the codes can be on GitHub. Um, I'll push this as soon as I'm done. Vid, like it'll be pushed before the video's up, so feel free to go check it out if you want to run it yourself. If you've got any ideas on improvements, um, particularly how I like cut down the time on the 14 by 14 so I've, I've ran it on a couple and it wouldn't run anything like under a minute which would be nice eventually we'll get there things like this for example and um, this is a guarantee like this has to happen it's a, actually a forced move but I don't know how to code this into a computer to tell it so and um, the reason it's a forced move is because this square right here can only be occupied by either red or something that entered here um, or something that entered here but like it's symmetrical so we're just going to look at here the only thing that could enter here is either purple or anything else now if it was anything else 
So say white, white enters here and goes round. It then completely isolates purple, so it can't be anything except purple or red. Now if it was purple, purple went round, we've now got a loop. So it can't be purple. So it has to be red, and therefore that's a forced move, but I don't know how to put that into a computer. Um, like I could, but it's not very neat and nice. I was hoping to be a nice way to do it. But just things like that will really help cut down. Um, so yeah, if you've got any ideas, let me know, make a pull request or whatever. And yeah, that's about it. I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.